Thank you very much for the introduction and thank you very much for, for inviting me here. Uh, I will uh, talk more in general uh, about the, the agenda and, and the priorities that we have for it. Uh, part uh, what it contains and partly uh, what we are doing about it from now. And then uh, my, my colleague, <laughs> Ambassador Nordil, will talk about the more specific uh, issues of food security. So as Ambassador Borge has already pointed out, uh, this is really a, a paradigm shift. This is the first time that we, uh, in a conclusive way, merge the agendas for development and the agendas for environment and climate. And it is the first time that we uh, really connect the aims and the goals of an agenda with the means of implementations, the financing for getting there and the other tools for getting to the aims and tools that we have. And maybe more radical or more spe special compared to what we have done before, because this is of course building on, on, uh, long, on, on uh, an understanding and on conferences and agreements that we have seen now for some, some decades, the Rio and the, and the Stockholm conferences, the Millennium Development Goals, the financing for development and so on. Uh, but we have never come this far in merging uh, the agendas and the means of implementation. But even more radical, I would say, is that this is so clearly an agenda for all of us. It's universal. Sweden has to implement this agenda in our national policy. We have to implement it in our international policy. And we do have a responsibility for what we are doing globally. And we also, just as uh, has been pointed to also by the previous uh, speakers, see this very much as a whole commitment that we made during 2015, where the 2030 agenda is one of three very important components. We had the agreement on, on financing for development in Addis Ababa in July. Had we not been able to agree on the means of implementation, putting the money to the mouth, but also very clearly pointing to how to use the resources. It would not have been able for us to reach a, such a comprehensive uh, result in September uh, at the UN General Assembly. And I think it was critical for us to be able to reach the agreement at COP21 that we had, that we had the, the 2030 agenda on the table. So my government uh, speaks often about 2015 as a year of possibilities. It was a year, of course, of many bad news, but it was also a year when we came together on long-term and visionary agreements on how to, to handle this situation. The 2030 agenda has also been different in the sense that the process for getting there has been very different compared to a regular UN negotiation. It has been a very broad and a very inclusive process. It started almost three years ago uh, when the UN set itself uh, the mission to consult with the world's population. And of course, um, you cannot reach out to the whole population, but uh, 100 countries or more have been, been endorsed by this, this uh, dialogue and these intensive dialogues, doing that in any, any way that they could uh, imagine. I mean, having thematic uh, seminars, opening the internet, uh, raising the issues of what is important to you, uh, which are the global challenges that you need for, for, for development, and getting answers from, from about 10 million of people. And then there was formed something called the Open Working Group, and that was also very unusual. They started their work in, in or their, the main part of their work was made during 2014. Uh, it was uh, a task decided by the Rio Plus 20 conference, and it was uh, from the beginning uh, gathering about 30 countries designed to form part of the Open Working Group. But uh, as the name uh, uh, says, it was open to, to uh, all the member states, and in the end, all the member states also took part of the discussions because it became more and more clear that this 
was something interesting and important that was happening in the open working group. It was also very op it was also open in the sense that uh, it was not traditional uh, UN negotiations. It was more of, of a seminar, more like we are talking uh, here today, uh, trying to identify uh, which are the challenges. What do you, we need to 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 uh, to find the measures to 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 get there? And it, this resulted in in. Um, the 17 goals and 169 uh, 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 targets that, that uh, you can see on the wall. Uh, I forgot to say that it was also open in, in uh, a third very uh, important sense, and that was that it was not only governments taking part of the discussion. And I think this was essential. This was one of the key reasons why we could have such a, a, a broad agenda. It was civil society taking an essential part in the discussions. And civil society means in this, this uh, uh, in this uh, discussions both uh, the traditional uh, CSOs, but it also means business and trade unions. At last, and last but not least, it means academia. And academia has played a very important role in in uh, formulating the goals and targets. Uh, the discussions have been very much uh, inspired by by the recommendations from, from academia. So in the beginning of 2015, uh, the intergovernmental pro process took over this recommendation for 17 goals and, and 169 targets. And as you see, what we got as a recommendation is a set of goals and targets that are very comprehensive. What they are telling us is that uh, the challenges are in interlinked, they are integral. You cannot reach one of the goals unle unless you reach also the other goals. And if you look into the, the uh, uh, targets, the 169 targets that comes with the 17 goals, you will also find that uh, the goals come with targets that do these specific links to, 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 to other goals. And they also come with uh, means of implementation. And then, of course, there is uh, a seven, the, the goal 17 does it specifically on means of, of implementation. So, the for, uh, from 2015, we started a more, uh, what we had expected to be a more uh, traditional intergovernmental negotiation. In order to uh, reach a more comprehensive package, two co-facilitators were assigned, and that was the permanent representatives, the ambassadors from Kenya and Ireland, who were going to lead us through this process. And the Kenyan ambassador had been also the co-facilitator for the Open Working Group, and he and others found that one of the key uh, reasons for this good result really was the working method. So I think we have done something very special and I hope inspiring for other UN negotiations uh, to keep the working methods to a large extent from the Open Working Group also in the intergovernmental negotiations. We have had a very open discussion, open for being UN and the multilateral negotiations of course, uh, in the intergovernmental negotiations. The co-facilitators have been respectful but rather strict with us. They have been holding very tightly to the pen. And I think that has been one of the, the, the main reasons also for being able to, to get this far, for, for, for being so, so ambitious. And we have kept a very close dialogue with, with the civil society. Civil society has formed part of the negotiations also when we, when we took on, on uh, the work of intergovernmental negotiations. And in Sweden we have, have had a very intense uh, consultations with, with civil society. Uh, SLU has been, been uh, part of the specific consultations that we have had on, on all, the, all the goals. We have had open seminars and we have had uh, civil society represented in our national delegation each and every uh, week that we have been, been uh, negotiating. Very early when we started the intergovernmental negotiations, it was clear that uh, countries did, were not prepared to risk what they had achieved at the Open Working Group. So the result from the Open Working Group 
in principle, uh, was taken on the whole way into the package of, of, of the 2030 agenda. But then, of course, uh, we needed to, to set this in a context. So the package of the 2030 agenda also contains, of course, a political declaration and uh, the means of implementation, as I have already been talking about, and uh, just as important, uh, the framework for, for, framework for follow-up and, and review. My predecessor told me, uh, who was working in the Open Working Group, that she was surprised that they had come that far. And that's really the assessments that I do after uh, negotiating the whole package. I think we managed in the political declaration to give a basis and a perspective that even sharpened the, the, the achievements that we have in, in, the, uh, in the goals and, uh, goals and targets. Um, I think we managed to have an even clearer message on uh, the right-based approach in the 2030 agenda. There are rather strong uh, wordings on uh, uh, gender equality and the need for empowerment of, of women and girls. It was surprisingly easy to have general uh, comments and, and, and uh, markings of, of, of the need for gender equality. But we also managed to get gender equality into the, right, into the wordings on rights for education, rights for decent jobs and so on. This decent work, of course, I mean, that's a, an important difference. Um, we also have already in goal 16, the needs for rule-based societies and good governance, but we managed to sharpen that in the political declaration and even to get the, the word democracy, which is sometimes controversial, into the political de declaration. Uh, we also have uh, an even clearer uh, reference, uh, or several clear references to, to the ILO's decent work uh, agenda. We also managed to pick up, pick up on the goal 16 and the, the uh, recognition of how necessary is a peaceful society and freedom from violence, freedom from conflict in order to, to get results. If you look on the, the countries that did not manage to fulfill the Millennium Development Goals, those are exactly the countries that were struck by, by conflict during this year. So this is essential that that, that, that is part of, of the agenda. Some of the aspects that uh, Sweden put a lot of priority to during the, the negotiations uh, was exactly this need for a balance between the, the perspectives and specifically a balance between the environment and climate agenda and the uh, poverty agenda. This is of course uh, something uh, on which you can have very long discussions in, in, in the UN. But I think we got a, a, a pretty good balance on, on this agenda. It's essential to fulfill and take on board both of the challenges in order to get results. And we are also specifically happy, of course, that this is a universal agenda. It's not a north-south agenda, it's a universal agenda. And just as important is that um, we do have the means of implementation. The other pillar in this uh, house of, of Agenda 2030 inside the, the, the agenda. We have it partly in the goals and targets from the Open Working Group. But one issue that was surprisingly controversial was the issue of financing for development. Financing for development is a much more elaborated agenda for, for uh, uh, how to make sure that we reach the goals. And now we do have a specific reference in the agenda to the financing for development. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel. We just have to follow that, that agenda when, when we go ahead. And the financing for development uh, is positive in the sense that it does not talk only about uh, the international cooperation. It does make very clear that that is only a minor part of the financial flows. And in order to reach sustainable development, we need to influence all the financial resources, all the financial flows. 
The major part, of course, are private flows and private investments. And if we don't manage to, to influence them in a way that does support sustainability, we, we will not be able to, to, to reach the, the goals of the 2030 agenda. Now I lost myself. Um, Another very important thing in the financing for development is that it's, 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 I mean, it's not only about money. It is about money in the sense that the EU recommitted to the 0 0.7 point for, for international uh, cooperation, which was necessary, but that is only a basis. Uh, but it also uh, points very clearly to the need to mainstream the development uh, goals and the sustainability goals into all policy areas. The policy coherence for development is clearly pointed out as one of the main tools for, for reaching the agenda. And last but not least, uh, the package contains the framework for follow-up and, and, and review. We need, of course, to, to uh, follow developments all through these 15 years. And we need to do it in an as interactive way as possible because uh, this is an ambitious agenda and we need ambitious means of implementation and we need to make sure that we can follow, follow uh, developments. This follow-up will be make, made on three levels. It will be made nationally, it will be made regionally, and regionally more uh, as a dialogue, more as, uh, as a peer review in order to learn from each other. And it will be made in the UN, of course. UN has a specific body, the high-level political forum, that meets uh, on a ministerial living level once a year and will follow up on, on, on the development. And now, this has to go to, into reality. The agreement needs to, to be, be implemented. And uh, many of us are... are uh, uh, many countries are, are uh, looking for the best way to do this. We are in a phase of, of intense dialogue with, with, uh, with different countries. Um, some have come uh, rather, rather far. Uh, many would say that Sweden is one of the countries that have, have come comparatively far in this endeavor, but there are others that are, are very well equipped too. Um, many of you uh, uh, attained the launching conference of the government, the 8th of, of, uh, of January. Uh, I think it proves that the government uh, puts this uh, very high on their priority list, and that's a good start. But what was, I believe, even more important was that uh, this uh, conference or launching event showed very clearly that uh, a lot of actors, impressively many actors from different sectors in the Swedish society, has this very high on their priority lists. And what's more, many of them are already engaged in, in uh, profound work towards obtaining the goals of 2030. Uh, not necessarily because they have read the 2030 agenda, but uh, because they have been working for sustainability for, for, for a long time. We had, very interesting examples of, of municipalities, academia, and, and the CSOs uh, telling us about how they are working for sustainability already. And I think it was Ambassador Borgo who uh, also referred to the uh, uh, division of work in, the, in the, the government. The Prime Minister is very eager to keep being in the lead for this work. He will continue to, to gather the whole government uh, on a regular basis in order to discuss how far have we come and what do we need to do. And each and every minister will be responsible for mainstreaming the 2030 agenda into their respective policy area, of course. But in order to have this ensured, and in order to coordinate this, uh, three uh, of our ministers have been assigned with, with specific responsibility to coordinate and to kind of push this, this, this endeavor. And the Minister for, for uh, Public Administration has the, the, the mission to coordinate the national implementation. And the Minister for International Development Cooperation, my minister, 
will continue to be in the lead for our international commitments, of course. And that will be done uh, through the UN, uh, both the follow-up and the, the, uh, on, on the process, but also uh, when it comes to making UN fit for, for taking on this endeavor themselves. It will be made, of course, through, through international cooperation. Sweden is right now in the process of a broad consultation with the civil society on formulating a new policy framework for international cooperation, taking the basis in, in the 2030 agenda. And most importantly, we are doing it through the relaunched, relaunched policy coherence for development, making sure that, that each and every policy area takes on 2030 in the international work. Every ministry has already made a first action plan, identifying at least one issue, some of them, some more, on how to fulfill the 2030 agenda. We need to build on that, of course. It's only a beginning, but we have started the work. And not least important, the ministry, therefore, for the future. I think it's essential that we are able to, to keep these two, two perspectives or combine the perspectives of very long-term and visionary um, thinking on how to get to this, uh, um, to the aim that we, and to the ambition that's, that we have set ourselves. But in order to do that, we also need to be very concrete and very local. So that's why this is a very good combination, having both the Minister for the Future and the Minister for Pu Public Administration with his responsibility for the municipalities in the leading group uh, of the government. And just as important is to work together with the whole society. Uh, the government will, will uh, take the initiative to form a delegation uh, comprising civil, the breadth of civil society with a mission to communicate around the agenda, may, make it known to the, to the public, but also to identify the needs. What have we already managed to do? And what do we need to do further? What, what, what gaps are there to fulfill? And they will, they will uh, provide us with, with the recommendations on uh, political initiatives uh, to take. Have I spoken too long? No? <laughs> um, then, of course, there are intense work going on in the UN. UN will have two main uh, issues. Uh, they will need to Im implement, they need to make themselves ap apt for the, 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 uh, the mission. They will play a very important role through their uh, different uh, bodies, of course, to, to, to fulfill the agenda. But they will also be very important for the, for the follow-up and the inspiration to, and to keep, keep the world together in this endeavor. Uh, in April, there will be a very, very uh, big event, back-to-back uh, -back with signing the COP21 uh, uh, with uh, most of, of, of uh, head of states uh, present in New York uh, in order to uh, boast our will to, to fulfill this and make clear that we stand ready to do that. And in July, the first uh, follow-up session in the, in the high-level political forum will take place. Uh, we are waiting still for the indicators uh, that should be used for, for this uh, follow-up. We need, of course, uh, key indicators, smart indicators, in order to measure the right uh, things. And this is a very complex and very task, challenging task. We should not wait, I think, for a perfect set from the beginning. We will have a first set in March. Uh, but we will need to develop that set from, from, from the March, March event. And we will also develop uh, our own national indicators, uh, but not yet. <laughs> and also, of course, Sweden is part of the European Union. We are intensely taking part of the discussions among the member states, sta member states and with the Commission. They will present their uh, communication on how to implement the 2030 agenda in the EU work, both, both the internal work, the internal agenda, but also in, in EU, e, the EU's external policy. This is not always easy, of course, and there are uh, many uh, other things 
many other policy uh, challenges right now that uh, tend to, to uh, be more pressing, that tend to make it uh, not always easy for, for member countries like Sweden or the Commission to, to uh, keep uh, the focus on, on a more long-term vision that is necessary also in order to, to, to do things about the more immediate uh, pressures that we have. And hence, both us and, and, and the development parts of the commissions point very much to the need for really using the policy coherence for development. We are using all the, the, the uh, measures that we could use. So all the OECD and, and other, other international organizations are also uh, uh, mechanisms that we would use in order to try to take the, the, the agenda forward also on the international scene. And last but not least, uh, one of those initiatives is the initiative taken by the Swedish Prime Minister to form uh, an international high-level support group. It, is, it contains uh, nine uh, uh, head of states from different regions, uh, countries on different uh, levels of, of development that have uh, made a call for action, assuring that they will take on board the implementation and go in the forefront for uh, the world fulfilling the 2030 agenda. Thank you.